Growing up in the 1980s in Nigeria, I was exposed to content that was overwhelmingly American content. As a child, I grew up on a healthy diet of Sesame Street, Bill Cosby, Voltron Defender of the Universe, Bart Simpson, Speed the Racer, and the list goes on and on and on of American television programming. Now, it's not that there weren't local content. Certainly, there was local content. Local content such as Feyi Kogma or Tales by Moonlight or The Mirror in the Sun. But, however, those local content were far limited. So, I was overwhelmingly exposed to and enjoyed and was influenced by American television programming for children. Fast forward to 2014, we're still talking about Africans creating content for themselves, creating their own stories, creating their own narratives. There are several industries that have aided us within Africa in terms of pushing forward this whole idea of us creating our own content. Examples that can be cited include Nollywood, Gollywood, and certainly the French-speaking African countries, the Francophonian countries that have also provided their own content, local content. However, there's certainly more we can do. And with this day and age of digital media revolution, we've seen sort of like a renaissance, a reawakening of this interest in providing local content for Africans by Africans. So when I was contacted by Africa Magic Go representatives to discuss and share their recent product launch, Africa Magic Go, in the U.S. market, it certainly got my interest and piqued my interest. I've been covering for seven years now local content from the continent to an American audience, a lot of whom are the African diaspora, and even more specifically for three years now on this Africa Music Law platform, the same holds. I do have a large following of Africans from Africa following African music law, but I equally have the same large following of Africans here in the U.S. listening to and, and being a part of African music law. So, so my sense was that it was directly very relevant based on the numbers and statistics and your interest and, what, and the kind of content we cover in African music law. It was directly relevant to you all and that you may be interested in hearing directly from a representative from Africa Magic Go where we can discuss extensively and comprehensively the revolution taking place in the continent and why it is relevant in this day and age to be talking about content created by Africans for Africans. However, before we get into all that, let's make this official and let me tell you who I am for those who are visiting us for the first time. First, from sunny California, USA, I'm your one and only certified game changer, Miss Uduak. I'm a fashion and entertainment lawyer with the law firm of ABT Law Group PC here in California. And this show, the AfricanMusicLaw.com show, is a show that I've established to simply be about the business of empowering the African artist as it stands the African artist still doesn't have his or her voice represented in the marketplace. And this show is about trailblazing that. The website is has been trailblazing for three years, and that's what we are about. We don't limit it, however, to African artists. We also expand to include other creative talents in the fashion and entertainment industry, both here in the USA and across the African continent. So our execution in empowering the African artists is simple. We take on the latest in celebrity legal drama, music business and industry news, and provide legal and business commentary and analysis on the intersection of pop culture and the law. We also invite our industry experts, so the artists themselves, as well as other cool people to share their insights with us to benefit you. This cool people we call AML people, so African Music Law abbreviated. And we bring, again, experts throughout the whole music value chain. We're very strategic about it. So throughout the whole music value chain, you're going to see everyone's just talking about and creating and and, and putting out information that can benefit our community. Well, obviously the next question is, well, how do I get with the program? How do I subscribe, Ms. Uduak? It's relatively easy. You can subscribe on www.africanmusiclaw.com and that will help you stay updated on when we publish our weekly podcasts. 
you also have expanded uh, options of iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So please be sure to find us there under the title of Africa Music Law. You can also find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Africa Music Law. You can find us on Twitter with the Twitter handle Africa Music Law. And for me personally, the host, you certainly can find me on my personal Twitter handle at Uruak Law. Also, if you would be interested in sponsoring the show or to appear as a guest, I'm always open to hearing from the community at large and also other brand sponsors interested in being a part of this that align with with the African Music Law values. So please feel free to hit me up at africamusiclaw at gmail.com. The most important question as far as I'm personally concerned on this particular platform is how you, my listeners, are doing. So I'm going to ask you, how are you doing? I hope that your previous week was great and that as we prepare to usher in this new week, you are focused. I find for me personally and professionally that there are a lot of distractions and sometimes it's just really or many times to get the maximum performance and productivity. It's just really staying very, very focused and disciplined and avoiding any kind of distractions. So I extend that to you and hope that your week is focused. It's highly productive and most importantly, healthy, both on the mental, emotional, physical and spiritual realm. So check this out, folks. Here's what I want to do. First of all, a big shout out to some African Music Law listeners and readers, including Crystal Obi, Murawa Olubela and Kingsley Egonu. These are individuals that continue to really engage with the content, engage with me on social media, among many. A lot of you are also sending your emails. I appreciate your emails when I receive them. Thank you. And or when I get to them, it's more like it also. (laughs) So I appreciate them. Thank you all so much. It's, It's good to be communicating with you all. August 24th, I have um, calendared for an opportunity for us to all get together for at least one hour to talk and and communicate directly. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to put the information on the website. And that August 24th is meant to be a celebration of our August 23rd, third year anniversary. So I'll put the information on the website. Please, please, for those interested, Feel free to sign up and I can't wait to meet you all and talk to you guys. I have an hour scheduled, but we can go a little more than an hour because August 24th is a Sunday. So I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun, 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 fun. Okie dokie. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we go right into meeting our special guest today to talk about the video on demand market. And what I've done in this interview is make it as comprehensive as possible, covering all areas that I thought would be highly relevant for all of you listening. So hopefully you not only enjoy it, but you also pull out your notepads and take important notes. And um, I will catch you at the end of the interview. You're listening to the AfricanMusicLaw.com show with Miss Uruak. I told you guys we had a special guest and now you get to meet him and we're going to launch fully into our discussion today about the video on demand market and video on demand in the U.S. as well as in Africa. Allow me to introduce you all to the general manager for VOD for DSTV Digital, Graham Cummin. Hi Uruak and uh, good morning to your listeners. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. It's good to have you on. Yeah, it's good to be here. Great to be chatting about video on demand. It's a 
It's a great subject, a growing area, and uh, glad to be talking to you. Well, likewise, it's good to, to, to also be talking about the subject and to be talking to you. So let's get to know you a little bit more here in the U.S. We don't know who Graham Cumming is, and we don't also know about your company. A lot of people probably haven't have ever heard of DSTV. So give us an insight on who you are, why the love and interest in technology and digital products, and, and why this company? Sure, no problem. So I essentially look after video-on-demand products for uh, DSTV Digital Media, which is a, a division of, of MultiChoice. Um, and essentially, MultiChoice is one of Africa's biggest pay TV operators. Um, we provide uh, pay TV services to uh, most of the African uh, countries in sub-Saharan Africa. And the digital media division really um, supports the pay TV business with digital products. So I've been in the game for about 14 years now, always on the, on the digital side of things. Uh, have been involved in uh, a lot of the, 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 the Big Brother reality show developments, the, the growth of those products uh, across the continent, um, building out websites, mobile sites, and portals. And, uh, and now um, we find ourselves very heavily involved in, in building out video-on-demand products um, as the technology kind of opens up on the continent. Okay, so let's even narrow it down more and still get to know you. The, the, there's the professional side you've told us about. Um, what about the personal side? What do you do when you're not busy working? Sure. So I, I'm based in Randburg, which is the headquarters of our, our, of our operation on the continent. Um, uh, and Randburg is in Johannesburg, but for those listeners who don't know where Randburg is. So okay. we're, we're on the tip of the continent. Um, from a personal aspect, um, I'm a keen sports lover. Ah, uh, Nice. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big mountain biker. I love cycling uh, and the outdoors. We've got a great climate here in South Africa. We've got you know, one of the better climates around the world. Uh, so, yeah, outdoorsy person. Um, also obsessed with gadgets and, and all things tech. Why are you so obsessed with gadgets and all, all things tech? Uh, I think it's just the, the possibilities um, that, uh, that gadgets and, and the kind of convergence of devices are starting to open up. It's such an interesting area. And, and given the line of work that we're in, um, there's a, a natural affinity to, you know, gadgets and, and, and products and, and, uh, and technology. All right, so let's transition and begin to talk about the expansion and convergence you just mentioned. We're going to get into the actual interest of Africa Magic Go, the product that you've now launched into the U.S. market, which is actually surprising and unexpected to some extent, at least from um, certain thought leaders, myself included, uh, on this end. Let's start first with the landscape and evolution of Africa's video-on-demand market. Actually, before we do that, why don't you tell us what video-on-demand is? We know what it is, but for our general audience, what does video-on-demand mean? Uh, I mean, video-on-demand is, is the term that, that we give um, to essentially the behavior that allows a user to choose uh, what they want to watch, when they want to watch it, sort of on their own terms. Um, for, for many years, you, uh, viewers have been used to consuming video on, on a linear basis, um, i.e., you know, appointment viewing, um, sitting down, switching on a channel, and at eight o'clock, you know, watching the news, for example. Video on demand is is essentially just the behavior that allows them to go and pick and choose the content that they want to watch, and uh, to be able to watch that on on their own terms and, and their own time. For our U.S. audience um, to follow, would that would an example of a VOD be Netflix, for example? Yeah, uh, Netflix is a is is a type of video on demand service. It's it's a subscription based service, so you pay a monthly fee and you get access to a, a library of content, um, and that's essentially the you know aligned to the service that that we just launched with Africa Magic Go. It's 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 subscription video based. Um, so you pay a monthly fee and you get access to movies and series um, and other entertainment content. Okay, I know you guys call yourself the Hulu of uh, Africa, basically, because Netflix is taken by someone else. Um, that's your competitor, Iroko TV, that says they're the Netflix. So I saw this, the press release saying Hulu. So Hulu is yet another form of a VOD, correct? Correct, it is, yes. And, and I mean, I think Hulu is a lot... Close, uh, closer aligned to the you know the broadcast the networks in in the US um, and, and we're we're a pay TV broadcaster here in Africa so you know the fact that we're moving uh, television content into an online space and providing access to that um, kind of is is a lot closely uh, closer aligned to a Hulu type service than than a Netflix service. Let's go back to the discussion on hey you know what. 
no longer linear content being provided to you. You get to choose as the consumer when you want, what you want to watch, when and w- at what time, what works for you. Here, that caused a major disruption in our technology market and across industries. For the African market, let's go back to the landscape and evolution. What's been the kind of disruption that your continent has seen, and particularly from where you sit in South Africa? So, so I mean, from, from a landscape perspective, I think, you know, we, we have... We have a very different sort of uh, technology landscape uh, th- than than what we see in the U.S. And, and the U.K. and the European markets. Um, in those in those U.S. markets, um, your fixed line infrastructure is a lot more developed than it is here on the African continent. Um, f- fixed line I- is a is a scarce resource from a technology perspective. A, a lot more connectivity and distribution happens via mobile networks. Um, and and even at, at a mobile network level, um, you know the the delivery of of high quality, high definition content in, in large volumes becomes challenging. So, I think um, in some respects we, we're still playing catch up from a connectivity point of view, mm. uh, and that's presented some challenges. Um, you know, which makes uh, which makes a a service like Africa Magic Go and launching in the US. Uh, a lot easier for us to kind of learn and, and get into this game and, and figure out what works and what doesn't work. So you said we stop playing catch up. Well, basically, uh, what, what I'm saying is I think from a connectivity point of view, Africa is, is, is still catching up oh, to the it. level of connectivity mm-hmm. that we're seeing in the US and the UK markets. Um, and, and the landscape differences are, are really the differences between fixed line connectivity in, in the US and the UK markets um, and, and mobile connectivity on the, on the African continent. We're going to get into some of the challenges within the VOD space, and you're already sort of touching on some of those things. But at what point did your company decide to go into just the video and demand market? Because I know that West Africa really picked that up with Iroko TV. Then you've got Kenya with Buni TV and all these other markets, which you would have expected South Africa to really lead that revolution. Why has it taken this long for your company to really go full stream? Well, I think bear in mind, you know, Africa Magic Go is just one of the products um, that are available on our pay TV service. We, we, we do provide transactional video on demand products in South Africa, and we've recently launched those in, into other countries in Africa. Um, and and catch up services or, or TV Anywhere services, those have been around for the past three years. It, it's not that uh, Africa Magic Go is our first. Uh, foray into video on demand products. We, we have launched these products in our territories um, over the last three years. Uh, we run a, a transactional video on demand service called Box Office, um, and we run a catch up TV service, uh, which, is, which is exactly that. It's catch up TV. So once it's aired on, on pay TV, it's available uh, online, essentially. So, so, no, Africa Magic Go is not our first foray into VOD, um, but it is. It is our first foray into subscription video on demand. So essentially charging over and above a subscription fee that a, you know, a normal user would pay, um, it, it's charging for access to this library. Yeah, and I think maybe that's how I was trying to narrow the, the, um, the specific question because you have the freemium model and then you've got the subscription and you've got all those competitors in the space who some of them started with freemium and now everyone is going subscription and you're taking it in a very bold direction by coming to the U.S. market, which is, again, quite interesting. But not to be too ahead of ourselves. We're in Africa. You're talking about the landscape. Talk a little bit more about mobile uh, devices and how that plays a role in the VOD market in Africa. Africa is, is a mobile connected continent. Um, as I mentioned, you know, fixed line connectivity is, is a scarce sort of resource on our continent. So most of the most of the usage or most of the connections to the internet happen via a mobile device. So it, it makes sense that you know if you're going to offer a service, uh, that service needs to be uh, accessible via a mobile device. And, and it's your smart end, you know, your your high end smartphone um, devices that are really capable of of serving up uh, high quality content, uh, taking payments, you know, providing rich application interfaces. So. You know, it is a mobile market. Um, I think uh, it's still dominant. What are the numbers? What are the numbers in terms of mobile uh, technology and where you see the VOD market going? 
I mean, from a from a mobile handset perspective, you, you're talking hundreds of millions of, of users who have who have access to mobile phones. Of those hundreds of millions, I think the estimates are around about twenty uh, percent of those are smartphones. So you're probably going to want to target those those twenty percent smartphones with things like applications and uh, and high end video services. But I think you know to to come back to the challenges. Um, the challenge still exists, you know, get, getting video or high quality video over a mobile network to handset is, is not a trivial task. And, and to do that at scale is, uh, is quite challenging. And I think we still have some, some way to go um, before it's kind of a seamless experience for a user. Okay, and I'm asking you some of those things to break in on a very basic level because I don't want to be presumptuous that every person listening to this has all those details, even though it's said over and over again in the news. But um, certain people and just generally the media sort of blanks out out here in the West when we're talking about Africa. So to us, it's common knowledge that mobile technology is huge and that, you know, connectivity issues are prevalent. And if you really want to reach the average um African across, especially in the big markets of Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa, you need to be t- talking mobile technology. But out yeah. here, most people don't come with that knowledge. So I will ask you, as I indicated before, to break some terms down and, and be that uh, basic so that my audience can follow. And regardless of who hears it, wherever they hear it, they, they are in tune with what we're talking about. But let's talk about competitors um, for a quick second. You've got over 70, I think I was looking at the research, and over 70 VOD competitors in that market space. We do hear about um, Iroko TV, there's Booney TV, as I mentioned, and so many, many more uh, persons in the space, Afrinali doing things. What makes you stand out? I think to cut to the chase, you know, the, the, the availability of, of multiple services is great from a user perspective. It's healthy to have competition. Um, you know, what, what makes us different, I think, we, we're one of the largest uh, producers or providers of African film and television content on the continent. So, so we, we invest a lot of money in producing and commissioning uh, a lot of these shows. For us, this, this, this initiative or the, this project, the Africa Magic Go product, is really about trying to find new audiences and, and kind of extending the, the geographical reach of a channel like Africa Magic um, to new markets. It's... Uh, you know, we're a pay TV business at heart. Um, you know, content is uh, is making its way onto these new devices and new platforms. It's being uh, it's being driven by consumer demand. Um, so, so, so we have to meet that demand. It's 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 not like uh, you know we, we're setting up businesses specifically to compete with competitors. And uh, you know, it, it really is about we're investing in the content. We've got we, we're on the rights to a lot of this content. Uh, how do we extend the reach of that content and make it available um, to, a, to a diaspora audience that, that also wants to keep touch, you know, with the African continent as, uh, you know, cult- cultural uh, requirements and, and needs and, and attachments to that content? How do we make it available to them? So, so that's, that's really, I guess, where, where we differentiate ourselves. Okay. Um, in terms of content and content acquisition, uh, generally, and making content available and expanding the reach... For a long time and until till date, uh, from your parent company to your subsidiary company, over 80% of content acquisition comes f- directly here from the U.S. with very small percentage when you talk about local content created. Why all of a sudden are you pushing local content, if you will, to the U.S. market? What makes you think? Why USA? Why now? What makes you think our audience is interested in what you have to sell when you're spending a lot more time acquiring U.S. content and other Western content for your African market? Well, I think it, it goes back to that point around um, Africa Magic as a channel specifically producing content for the African market. And, and if we're producing that content for the African market and the African market has links with the diaspora market, um, you know, we're, we're making big assumptions that, that that diaspora market is also interested in that content or keeping touch with their roots here in Africa. So, so the content be, is relevant for the diaspora market. Um, I, I don't think we're making, uh, we're certainly not making content for, for the broader American market. It is, it is African content. It's, it's made by Africans for Africans. Um, and, 
you know, I, th I think we want to give Americans the opportunity to see uh, our cultures. The, 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 there's a great overlap between cultures in the diaspora market and, and you know, what, what happens in Nigeria and Kenya and South Africa. So I think that's the opportunity for us. Okay, so let me just, sorry, just for clarification. So specifically, you're saying it's not the broader American audience you're targeting. For now, at least, you're hyper-targeting and focused on the African diaspora. Someone Correct. like myself would be your target audience that wants Correct. to connect with, okay, not necessarily my American friends or American, you know, colleagues per se. Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't think they would identify with the content. And, and we certainly... Uh, wouldn't be so bold as to create content, you know, for, for a market that we didn't understand. I think it, it really is, you know, it's content created for the diaspora market. Hmm. That makes it interesting considering there's so many people already in that space then that or, or if I want content, I'm going to go online or go to specific persons or, or groups or companies to get that content because I already know where to go. Why would I add uh, Africa Magic Go to the list of this extensive list of um VOD uh, providers as it is? Be, because I think you probably would be familiar with a lot of the, the you know, the, the, the titles, the, the movies and series that, that we'd have available on that Africa Magic channel. So, you know, if, if you have friends or family that are talking about shows like 53 Extra or uh, Glam Report or, you know, the, the Soccer Africa uh, magazine show that we do around football, you know, those are shows that are available to the audience here on the continent but not necessarily to the to the diaspora audience because we don't run a pay TV service in, in, in the USA or the UK. So it, it's it's making that content accessible um, to that diaspora audience. Okay, so now specifically walk us through how we can access that. We go on your website. It's a subscription model on a, on a monthly basis. What happens in that, in that process? Okay, so, so basically you would go to uh, africamagicgo.com. So that's www.africamagicgo.com. Um, and essentially, uh, you would pay us $8 a month and you would get access then to a range of movies, series and entertainment programs that, uh, that, that, that we've, we've taken from the Africa Magic channel and put them into the service. Okay. And that's specifically local content by Africans created for Africans. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's talk then about content acquisition and licensing. A lot of issues are surrounding the legal part of a lot of this clearances because um, when you talk, are you providing, for example, Nollywood films or is it different? Are you even touching the Nollywood um, industry at all? So, so we are. I mean, we, we also produce our, uh, we, we produce our own films. So we, we commission films. I think this year we, we, we've, we'll, we'll commission 250 uh, unique titles. So those are, those are titles that will be produced that, that would never have been seen before. Okay. Um, and, and they'll be produced for the Africa Magic Channel. Um, and essentially, we'll put them onto that channel, but at the same time, we'll put them into this Africa Magic Go service. What are the percentages of films coming out of Nollywood that you would even be or have acquired? Um, because I'm curious about your content um, clearances, because that's a key issue now surrounding this whole VOD market in terms of you've got the infrastructure, now you're going to the content providers, and a lot of those content providers are not necessarily having those clearances, even though it's a big company like Africa Magic or DSTV. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, uh, I'd have to get the specifics from our, from our acquisition team. Um, you know, we've got a team that sits in Nigeria that uh, is plugged into the production scene and does a lot of this, the, the acquisition and uh, you know, kind of negotiation on our behalf. I mean, we're just running the service here from South Africa. But but essentially, you know, when we go out and we commission films um, for the Africa Magic Channel, we would uh, we, we would get the necessary rights, the, the rights clearances uh, agreed to. Um, we'd contract with those producers um, and, and let them know that the service is, is available and the content's going to go into the service. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've got to make it as easy as possible for both parties, the, the, the party producing the content and, uh, and the party, you know, essentially funding and acquiring that content. Yeah, I understand that what I was trying to distinguish was you already have, if your commission work, of course, you're going to go through that process and vet it and get the proper agreements in place. But for existing content, 
um, because you're coming into a market where we, we do sue a lot. I mean, we, we specialize in litigation, a lot of trial stuff. That's America. I mean, that some of the biggest lawsuits come out of the entertainment industry here, and they're focused on a lot of clearance rights, a lack thereof. So when you're coming into a market directly trying to target um, African diaspora, that opens your company as a whole to this issue that continues to be a major uh, thorn for a lot of VOD um, uh, content providers. But it's good to know that you're thinking through those processes and you have people on the ground negotiating that. Tell us a little bit more about just general regulation that is affecting both um, your entrance into the U.S. market, because the first thing I noticed was that in other for me to watch your content, as you say, targeting me specifically and my persons like me in the African diaspora, I've got to still sit in front of a computer and do that. Well, I'm on the go. I don't want to sit in front of a computer to plug in and watch your content. I want to watch it on my mobile devices. I want to watch it wherever I'm at, traveling, the whole nine yards, on the plane, wherever, if I can watch it on the plane. So why why that technology, considering you've already said that the American society is well advanced in terms of technology than even a lot of Africa? Yeah, so so I think that's a good question. I mean, uh, we launched the service a couple of months ago, and, and really it was about getting a getting a website presence up, getting a catalog together, putting the payment processes and, and, and platforms in place, and then starting to focus on rolling out access to the service across as many devices and, and access points as possible. So, so you're absolutely right. It's available as a website at the moment. Um, in fact, we, we've just released our iPad application, so, so there is an iOS uh, iPad application that's available in the U.S. store uh, that was released last night. So, oh, a bit of a awesome. bit of breaking news for for, for, for you and, and the listeners. Um, and and obviously we'll make a big song and dance and in a press release a, a, about that. So at the moment it's it's via via PC and and via the tablet application. Um, and and uh, you know as we. As we uh, kind of go through the next couple of months, we'll be looking at Android devices and and consoles and smart TV applications. It really comes down to uh, you know prioritizing resources and, and and trying to hit as many devices as possible. Okay, let me go a different direction for a minute, and that is to look at the economic growth factors generally in Africa that's driving such high demand uh, for VOD on the continent. Yeah, so I think I mean I think the primary factors are. You know, audiences are they're demanding they're demanding high quality content. They're demanding access to content. Um, you know, content content windowing uh, probably hasn't helped the situation in that you know if content is is, is kind of geo blocked in, in certain regions um, and and it's appealing content and users are talking about that content. You know, it, it kind of drives the whole piracy debate. You know, if if I'm interested in a show and I don't have access to it, how, how am I going to get it? You know, it, it fuels that whole piracy debate. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, we, we, we've got to make access to content as easy as possible. Um, we've got to provide uh, access via as many platforms as possible. Payment, payment options become... Uh, become a, a challenge that needs to be uh, kind of addressed in terms of, you know, on the, on the African continent, most of the payment happens through mobile wallets. So, you know, if, if we ever brought the service onto the continent, that, that would be one of the things we'd have to address is, is how do we integrate with a number of wallets in the various territories um, and allow users to actually pay for access to the service. Well, you've got um, Kenya's and PESA, right? They're making uh, that a lot easier. What are your plans for, for, that, for that easy payment as you're talking about? For access to content, yeah. So I mean, right now, you know, we're we're uh, we're diaspora focused, so we're using the PayPal um, wallet uh, to facilitate payment. And, and you know, in the US and the UK markets, that, that's probably your biggest kind of payment uh, platform. So at, at this stage, we don't have any plans to bring the service onto the African continent. But but uh, you know, if if we were to, um, mobile wallet integration would be one of the key things that we'd have to address. You mentioned new technology now, iOS for, you know, Apple users or, or people with, you know, iPhones can, can now have that, which is great. But there's a huge, huge, huge um, debate and issue over data privacy, and particularly when it comes to apps being on mobile phones. And how is your company, a South African company, now doing business in the U.S., dealing with that once you can now go mobile as you have gone? We're... 
we're facilitating payment through PayPal, so we're not storing credit card details. You know, the credit card details are stored with probably the biggest payment provider on on the planet. Um, so, so those are. Uh, those uh, privacy kind of laws are, you know, not new to what, what we're introducing at a product level. Um, and, and, and what we're storing on our side is really a, a username and a password and access to the service. So, I, I, you know, I don't believe the, the, um, the, the, the privacy kind of uh, concerns are, are, uh, are massive when it comes to our, our products. We, we, it's very early days for us still. Um, but it's, it's obviously something we need to be conscious of and uh, we'll, we'll apply our best where we need to. All right. So let's start talking about some of the ecosystem players. When we talk about generally VOD, could you give us an idea who we're talking about or players in, in, this, in this space? Internationally, I guess your, your big ecosystem players are the likes of your Amazons, your, your Netflixes, your Googles, um, uh, your, your Apples. Um, and, and they're providing video on demand services in various flavors, shapes, and forms. Um, you know, the, those those, sha- the, the, those shapes maybe uh, take the form of, of transactional uh, video on demand services. So, you know, whether it be iTunes offering you the latest movies or access to, you know, series box sets, um, all the way through to your subscription based services like your Netflixes uh, and, and your Hulu's, Hulu Pluses. Um, th- that are that are offering you deep catalog, uh, big library sort of access, not necessarily the latest content. So, I think um, those are the big platform players. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you you've mentioned the the African players, the Arocos and the Pana TVs. I mean, we, we have huge respect for for Arocco and what they've managed to achieve and and the service they have in place. Um, it's a fantastic service, and and as I mentioned before, around competition, I think it's. You know, it, it's healthy for consumers to have access to a range of products and services to choose from. So, you know, the fact that, that we're, we're commissioning content, putting it into a, an alternative service, just offers uh, more variety if you're, a, if you're a consumer of this type of product. I think that consumers should have options available. I don't think one person or one um, uh, company should uh, have a monopoly over it. And I think it's healthy competition and do agree with you. And I think... At least from my readings from Iraqo's uh, CEO, Jason Njoko, he has said that he finds your brand formidable. And, and I think that's a healthy thing because that pushes even more interesting uh, alternatives in the market. Let's talk about revenue sharing for a quick minute. A lot of content providers on the continent and even here complain a lot, especially when you're going down to actual direct interaction with, say, for example, the filmmaker the issue is always revenue share, and we saw that when new competitors entered the market and sort of paved the way, and we're still seeing that till today. What are your plans? So generally, what is the revenue sharing scheme you typically have with this content providers? Yeah, so I mean, it's an interesting question. In this particular product, the Africa Magic Go product, there is no revenue share model. It's it's a pure subscription based service. So. You know, we're commissioning that content. That that revenue essentially gets paid to the producers and the, and the talent during that commissioning process. And then we're just exercising our right to distribute that particular piece of content on on as many platforms as as we've purchased the rights to. So so there's no real revenue share um, angle to Africa Magic Go at this stage. But I mean, you know, going forward, perhaps that's something that that, that we should consider and, and look at. Can you stream at extremely low bandwidths or is it always going to be high bandwidths on the continent? Over here, not an issue, but on the continent, I'm curious. With the Africa Magic Go service, we've kind of assumed a minimum connection speed of, of one megabit per second mm. or one, one meg line speed. So, uh, you know, I think in that diaspora market that we're talking to, that, that's that, that probably not a problem. Exactly. In, in, uh, you, you're probably averaging, you know, 10 meg, you know, 10 to 20 meg lines in, in, in most areas. So, so that that's less of a problem for for the Africa Magic Go um, product right now. Um, you know, on the African continent, yes, we've got to be clever. You know, we, t- technology is kind of advancing. You know, compression rates are advancing. The the ability to do adaptive bitrate streaming or or output a stream at at multiple bit rates and then allow or, or, or serve the relevant bitrate to the to the user, depending on what connection his, you know, he, he's coming in at, um, certainly helps the cause. And so, yeah, it's about being smart and, and trying to use technology to deliver um, 
video-based products in uh, essentially uh, bandwidth-starved environments. Now I want uh, your forecast and just overview of what you see. I was reading a recent study that says that um, there's an ex expectation of very increased population by 2050 in Africa. So needless to say, that's going to be a huge demand for content. What are your plans for the future as you continue to expand your brand uh, in terms of content providing? Traditionally, we're a, we're a pay TV business, so our content is delivered via satellite. Um, you know, I think... You know, history has shown us that that satellite is still probably the most efficient way of getting content delivered to users um, and, and that it'll be around for a long time still. Um, but, you know, we can't ignore the fact that there is a, a mobile revolution that is taking place on this content. And, uh, you know, that, that mobile distribution of content is, is, is something that, uh, you know, is, is a reality today and, and is only going to improve with time and, and compression and, and, you know, technology improvement. So being geared up and prepared to deliver content over mobile and to mobile devices is, is definitely something that, uh, that we're mindful of. Okay. I want to go a direction of marketing and promotions and some of the brand ambassador deals that you um, are signing for Africa Magic Go. You're looking at a lot of the talents from Nollywood and Gollywood. What is your general overview in terms of signing a lot of this brand ambassadors? Because it seems Africa is so oversaturated with a lot of this immediate signing of brand ambassadors for new products rolled out all the time. I, I think it's just about you know, finding the most efficient ways of, uh, of getting the message out there. Um, and, and if we can connect with, uh, w with brand ambassadors, people who, who have ties to the, the diaspora market, who have ties to family and friends back on the continent, um, then, uh, you, you know, we, we're, we're allowing the word of mouth uh, experiential kind of marketing uh, angles. And, and, and it's about using those talents um, to, to, to spread the, the message about our, our, our product launch. That, that's really what's, what, what's driving it. I think it's a good direction that you, needless to say, your company is going because while you talk about pay TV, my understanding on the numbers is that pay TV is only reaching 10 million out of Africa's over a billion people. And so the reach uh, in terms of mobile technology and the VOD market seems like it just supports a, a major, major push that would be a big return on investment down the line. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, l l like we've said a, a couple of times, you know, mobile is the, is where the action is at, um, and, and getting getting video onto mobile phones, uh, into people's homes, into you know, wh whilst they're sitting in traffic, and you know, on long commutes between the office and home, uh, th that's where the entertainment consumption is going to happen. So uh, we've got to we've got to continue evolving our products and services and, and reaching those those users um, you know where, where that where they are and and on the devices that that they that, that they have with them any other predictions and forecasts as general manager for VOD for DSTV what are your predictions and forecast uh, in terms of what lies ahead both with your penetration in the US market as well as on the continent I think um, you know we've seen growing interest uh, in stories from Africa um, you know, being told from an African perspective. Um, I think uh, given the limited quantity of African content available to the diaspora, uh, you know, the opportunities like Africa Magic uh, Go are, are only going to grow. I think there's going to be great demand for locally produced content, um, and, and we're excited to, to be part of that story. Um, I think uh, I think we, we've still got a lot of uh, a long way to go in terms of solving the distribution challenges, um, but you know that that that's that's a, that, that's a problem that holds true for you know everyone trying to distribute content on the continent. Um, so you know, prediction-wise, I think uh, yeah, mobile is uh, mobile is the obvious one. The growth in mobile, the explosive the explosive growth in mobile. I think um, you know the the, the demand for locally produced African content is, is only going to grow. So I think we stand ourselves in good stead for, for providing this to for providing this kind of service both on the continent and and to those, you know, extending the reach and uh, breaking down those kind of geographical boundaries and, and delivering content to new audiences abroad. So we started this conversation learning a bit more about you. I want to close it out the same way. And for 14 years now, you've given your time, energy, resource, creativity, 
um, to DSTV and obviously enjoying what you're doing. And now you're a GM. Where do you see or want to see yourself within the next year or two in terms of your role and influence with the VOD market, um, especially while you're still with your company? Sure, that's a that's a big question. <laughs> I think, um, as I mentioned, you know, I, I'm interested in devices. I'm interested in technology. I'm particularly interested in this convergence um, space that we find ourselves in. This convergence between internet, kind of mobile telephony and television, and, and the possibilities that that opens up. I think we're, you know, for me personally, um, it's about uh, trying to. Uh, exploit or you know find find as many opportunities in that convergent space as possible and deliver meaningful solutions. Um, you know I think uh, I think it's a great opportunity and a great place and a and a great kind of uh, convergent space to be working in. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Graham, for your time and explaining what you're doing and why you're in the U.S. in the first place and why my demographic that you want to target should be even paying attention. Anything else you want to add before we say goodbye? No, just thanks, Udwak. Thanks for the opportunity of, of, uh, of bringing up to speed with what we're doing. And, um, yeah, we look forward to, uh, you know, chatting in future. It sounds good. Whenever you want to return, let me know. I'll be glad to have you to, to further discuss where, where you guys are. Excellent. Sounds great. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Good. Okay. Okay, AML people, thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher Radio and also to go directly to the website www.africanmusiclaw.com to see options of subscribing, whether via Facebook, newsletter, or also contacting or following us on Twitter. Have a great week ahead, and I will catch you all very soon. Cheers, people. Cheers.